What's up, guys? My name's Cody, and this is another UFC betting breakdown, this time for UFC Fight Island 7 or UFC ABC 1. And uh, pretty good card up here. We got Max Holloway and, K and Calvin Cater in the main event. We got some good fights all the way down. And uh, I'm excited to get into it. First f uh, fight card of the week, or I mean of the year. We got two more coming within the next week. And uh, so back on it uh, uh, for our M MMA community. Definitely excited. It feels like I haven't been here for a while. I did take the last card of 2020 off. I competed that weekend, and it was a pretty big one for me. Um, and so I wanted to focus on that. I hadn't taken a fight card off, let alone missed a fight card and forever i did get to watch it afterwards but i watch every fight card live so it was pretty crazy the only time i ever miss fight cards is when i'm competing but i'm glad i did take the weekend off i did uh win the tournament and i uh, got a gold so i was glad i focused on that um but i am looking forward to getting back here and uh breaking down these cards man um we got three fire cards in a week and uh this card is pretty damn good itself we did uh, we've lost a couple fights over the, for these next cards, but so far they're looking good. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to starting off strong. We did finish the last year 19 and five, pretty solid numbers. Uh, definitely made some good money on my part. Hopefully, I made y'all some good money. I always appreciate when y'all let me know that I did. Um, and shit, let's just keep it going for this year. Let's let's see if we can do better than that. Um, make sure you leave me a sub at the bottom. Or, I mean, a comment at the bottom and drop a sub. Um, I'm, I'm approaching 600 subs, trying to get to 1,000 so I can get partnered off YouTube so I can start going live on here. I go live on Twitch every day um, and definitely for the fights every time. Sometimes I bring fighters on, on there and watch the uh, fights with me. But, um, yeah, I'll start going live on here on YouTube more when I uh, get to 1,000 because then I can... I have some other features I can do. I can get like emotes and uh, the badges and stuff like that that I have on Twitch. So I don't really want to give that up. So once I can get it on YouTube too, I'll start going live on here more. But I really appreciate you guys. And uh, shit, with that being said, let's get into it. I think I've talked enough. Uh, first fight of the night, we got Jacob Kilburn taking on Austin Lingo. And they were pretty smart making this the first fight of the night. These, This is going to be a banger for sure. Regardless of which way this fight goes, I think uh, think it'll be a, a, a good first fight of the night. So, First off, we got Austin Lingo coming off his first loss. And it was to Yusuf Zalal, who's a pretty big uh, prospect right now. Um, you know, Zalal did kind of dominate him. But, you know, you got to think, 26 years old, first loss, you know, Fortis MMA. He, he's got to be, you know, working hard. See, sees where I, I, I like Lingo because uh, in this fight because while I do think this is going to be a banger these guys are going to just trade and go after it um, I feel like Lingo is a little bit more of the like cerebral fighter I could see him you know um, just staying a little bit more composed than I could see Jacob here and uh, you know neither one of them have, have been super tested you know if you go through their record haven't fought the toughest of guys, but, you know, um, Lingo here did have a, a solid five fights in LFA and uh, won all of them, uh, three of the five by, by finish, so, I mean, um, or four of the five. Um, so, I mean, that, that's pretty solid. Jacob Kilburn coming off that loss to Billy Corintillo, he was also dominated pre pretty thoroughly. He was, he was actually finished, and it was pretty, like, Billy... Typically someone who comes in starts off slow and works his way into the fight, but you know, this was kind of all Billy from start to finish and um, I was on Billy in that fight because you know if you go through While lingo hasn't had the greatest of competition before this fight either, you know Island fights he did have the Dana White contender series fight which he got finished by Bobby Moffitt um, and then you know it just Fight note out of there uh, at Hard Rock, out of t and then in Tennessee, Night of Explosion too. You know he's not fighting very. You know he did have a uh, pretty you know solid what nine amateur fights, which is pretty solid. Um, you know that that counts for something. I think people sleep on you know looking at people's amateur background, but which that does count for experience. He just hasn't fought a lot of like the upper echelon, and then 
the two best guys he's fought, you know, Bobby Moffitt and uh, Billy Corintillo, both beat him, both finished him. And he's, his Achilles heel has definitely been the jiu-jitsu, you know. He's been submitted in all three of his losses. Um, thing is, for him, he doesn't really have to worry about that too much in this fight because uh, Lingo, you know, I mean, it's not that he doesn't have submissions. He has a couple submissions on his record, but um, not against the highest quality of opponent. Not exactly like, you know, hit a guillotine, hit a, hit a rear naked choke. He's not a jiu-jitsu guy. He, he, he wants to strike. I do think these boys are going to just stand up go after it i do see a finish coming but um i don't know um i would lean towards the knockout um i won't rule out kilburn diving into a guillotine or maybe getting clubbed and subbed but i i like lingo here just because um i, I don't know if i would want to lay the minus 225 but i just feel like kilburn man uh he just doesn't see, while they're relatively the same age, it seems like Kilburn hasn't really found, like, his style yet, like, how he wants to fight. He just kind of, like, goes out there and wings it, it seems like. He doesn't seem like he's the highest of fight IQs, while Lingo, I feel like, you know, while the law was able to shut him down his last fight, I do feel like in this fight, you could see a, a little bit of a more composed fight. Like, while I do think these guys are going to bang... I think if anybody's smart enough to, like, hit a takedown, secure the round, or just, you know, know that he's up a round or two and and fight a little bit more defense, it's going to be Lingo. Lingo it just seems to be the, the more cerebral fighter. Uh, good striking. The striking's pretty close, and I don't see either one of these guys really going out there with a heavy grappling game plan. So I feel like Lingo is probably going to eventually get him out of there. I wouldn't rule out the submission, but I, th I feel like most likely it's going to be a TKO. I'd say second round, maybe into the first. Um, Lingo's got hands, man. And I think Jacob doesn't really have another style to beat Lingo or, or really anybody in the UFC other than just come forward and throw hands. And uh, I just feel like Lingo's going to catch him at some point, and that's why I'm going to go ahead and take Austin Lingo by second round TKO. And, um, oh, I do have a bet on that fight. I have, uh, the under, I have the, uh, the under two and a half and, um, that was minus one Oh five. So, um, I just, I don't know if I want to lay that two to one. I thought about taking lingo inside the distance, which I think is a pretty good play too. But, uh, overall I, 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 I they're both relatively inexperienced, um, I could see Kilburn getting a finish as well. So I have the under so far. Maybe I end up taking a lingo inside the distance. We'll see. Maybe I'll, after I see the weigh-ins. But uh, so far, I like that play. Now this next fight, we got Sarah Marais, uh, Marais taking on Vanessa Mello. And I say this all the time. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. And then I end up doing it. Not this time. Look, this fight, we got a 6-6 six and six fighter taking on a 10-8 and eight fighter. And you hear me all the time saying records don't mean everything. But... I mean, Jesus, they mean a little some some. They got the thing is about this fight is they got Sarah Morass as a minus two forty favorite, and I mean she does look like you know she's taking the fight pretty seriously, <laughs> but at the same time, man, it's just and I, and I mean she's fought some tough girls. These are this isn't the worst of competition. She's she's fought some pretty tough girls. Vanessa Mello. Um, you know, Trace Cortez, Irene Aldana, Carol Rosa. You know, the UFC weren't doing her any favors those last three fights. But um, the one thing she has shown, she's definitely durable. She's hard to finish. Um, other than that, it's just like mellow, man. She just doesn't have a lot of tools. And she's shown that if you can take her down, she's definitely pretty weak there. Doesn't have a, gr a great jiu-jitsu background. She doesn't have really weapons off of her back. Or the greatest get up game. I really it's like she's just a durable girl who'll come forward, she'll throw that right hand, decent pop in it. But Sarah Mirage should win this fight. It's just man, I don't I can't think of anybody in the division that I would be really wanting to pay uh minus two forty, like for Sarah Mirage against. Like 
man, it's rough. Like, when you go through her, her record a little bit, it's like, you want me to pay minus 240 on somebody who lost this jar to Eubanks, Macy, Chase on fucking Talita Bernardo, Lucy Polavilo. I always forget how to say her name. Poldalova. Yeah, there it is. You know, man, even the Ashley Evan Smith, it's like, okay, typical lower level women MMA, arm bar from guard. <laughs> I mean, okay, I'll give her a pass on the Juliana Pena and Andrade losses, but even the Pennington loss, especially being her third in, uh, professional fight. But she definitely has the better experience, which is why I lean Sarah Moras by decision. If you're going to take Moras, at least take her by decision to get a bit of a better price. But it's just like, man, I, I guess I could understand if you were just like, fuck it, just off the line, I'm going to just throw it in there at damn near 2-1 to one for Melo because this is probably going to be a close decision. So I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't be able to say anything if you did that. But me personally, I'm going to pick Sarah Marais by decision. I'm not betting that. I don't even feel like having the stress. Look, I'm going to be real with you. This is going to be a smoke break fight. It's going to be a fucking snack break fight. And we're going to get into the third fight. Like, that's yeah, no reason to just, I'll just go play blackjack if I'm going to do that. Next fight that we got a banger. We got David Zawada taking on Ramazan Amiv. I say a banger, but it is a Ramazan Amiv fight. So it, I, I'm just, as an MMA fan of hardcore, I'm interested in this fight. But Ramazan Amiv, okay. I guess I should take back the word banger because Ramazan Amiv, he does everything in his power to make the fight not a banger. I just feel like Zawada actually, you know... If anybody could make it an interesting an interesting fight with Ramzan, you know, I feel like Zawada does have some tools to make it a pretty interesting fight. I think he's going to, you know, uh, do everything in his power to not let Amiv just fucking hold him up against the cage. We saw Amiv last time against the homie, uh, my boy, the green mask, Nicholas Stolze, and... Uh, Twitch friend, cool ass dude, great fighter, man. Uh, looking forward to seeing his next fight. But uh, and he did rock uh, Amiv a couple times. But uh, we just saw Amiv. He just has that fucking game plan that's tough to beat sometimes, man. He just wants to. He's totally cool with giving you that wet blanket, and he's cool with not even getting the takedown, just putting his weight on you in the clinch. Some pitter patter shots here and there. I think Nicholas. Uh, actually outstruck him in the fight, but it just didn't matter because uh, Amiv had so much control. He outweighed it a little bit with the control on the cage and a couple takedowns. Uh, you did see in the Anthony Rocco Martin fight that if he can't get to his game plan, he doesn't really have like a great plan B. You know, like that is how he likes to fight. He wants to put you up against the cage, look for takedowns in the like. In the process, knee in your legs, little fucking uppercuts in the clinch, just short shots, and just swarm you. Not let you get at range where you can have your full power. Not sit at kickboxing range with you. Cause that's not what he does. Great. It's not that his striking's terrible. It's just he he's he's a low risk, t uh, he, like kind of fighter. He just he wants to put you on the cage where he knows you can't land your good shots. And uh, and just win off points, you know, like not er this really not like you would think. Oh, these guys want to. They, they all would be down to do whatever it takes to win, but it's really not like that, man. Like honestly, a lot of these guys are chasing bonuses, or chasing fame, or chasing this and that. Uh, but like Amiv, he is one of these guys who like he does not care, man. He's cool with just holding you for three rounds and winning a boring decision. And, I mean, he did that to Sam Alvey. Uh, <clears throat> here, I actually went back and rewatched that fight because I was like, man, that's a big boy. Like, damn, a lot bigger than Zawada. And he was able to just, like, completely stall him out. I mean, he's good at doing that. Uh, we did see him get uh, knocked out here. I'm not even going to try to pronounce homie's name. But pretty solid fighter, you know, uh, especially at the time. Um, but, um... You know, it's it, typically he's hard, he's a hard guy to catch because he's just not gonna let you get at the end of your punches, and he doesn't take a lot of risks. He's down to play it safe. 
Uh, David Zawada, on the other hand, man, uh, this guy, uh, he, he did get finished by Jing Lang Lee, who we'll be talking about a little bit later in the fight, but <clears throat> typically, I mean, this guy's doing the finishing. I mean, he pretty of like, I mean, his striking is pretty legit. He, I would definitely say he has a striking advantage. The only thing is it's just like how long can he keep it there? How long can he stay at his range without getting swarmed? That's gonna be, we're gonna know probably within the first three minutes of the fight wh where this is going. Even though we could see another X factor, is I do think the uh, I do think that fucking um Zawada does have the the cardio advantage because we do see Amiv slow down. Like a lot of the guys who have his kind of game plan are guys that break you and they have really good cardio Amiv though it's like man those third rounds get dicey a lot of times uh and 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 i have been thinking like man we might see eventually one of these guys who yeah maybe he loses uh or maybe Amiv wins the first round maybe even the second round but like somebody's gonna capitalize on that if he keeps like slowing down on the third and i mean um you know i don't know if if David's gonna be the one to do it, but it's just, um, you know, it, I I wouldn't put it past it happening. I thought about taking like a a, a flyer on like a third round uh, finish because it's like twenty six to one or something, but overall I do feel like Amiv wins a decision here. I don't think he'll be able to get him out of there. I just feel like he's just gonna put him up against the cage, and I mean, um, you know, and David's. Uh, career over at ksw it's like you're not fighting a lot of guys who have that kind of style and um and then you know losing to danny roberts losing to jing lang lee it's like okay i mean jing lang lee like he's a finisher man he can catch you and you know um <clears throat> i get people saying oh uh he submitted khabib's cousin it's like that's good that's good like you know I, you should get props for that but it's Khabib's cousin, not Khabib. Like, you know, I see people making bets for him to get a submission here just because of that. It's like, man, he does have some mis submissions on his record. He's a scrappy guy. He's tough. He's he probably does have the cardio advantage. But I feel like at the end of the day, man, Amiv's game plan that shit's gonna work. And I feel like this is gonna be the last time Amiv's game plan works. Eh. At, until it doesn't. I'm not saying it won't ever work again, but I feel like Amiv's gonna put him on the cage, he's gonna win two rounds with this game plan, and then after this one, they're gonna have to give him a step up. Then he, when he gasses in the third round against his next opponent, that's when we're gonna see it pay, uh, It really bite him in the ass. But I just, I, I gotta lean Amiv here. I want I wanted to find a way to bet Zawada here, but I, overall, I gotta take Amiv. I do have Amiv played by decision. Um, because if you're betting Amiv, like, you might as well get your extra money and take him by decision. He's just not a finisher, and I don't think he's going to finish a Wada. Um, oop, let me knock on that wood. And, uh, yeah, so, Amiv by decision. Let's move on to the next fight. Next up, we got Justin Taffa taking on Carlos Felipe. And I'm not going to lie, Carlos Felipe, <laughs> I have not been the biggest fan of this guy so far. Um, <clears throat> it really started in that spitback fight, and it's just like you're doing more talking than fighting. And I get like thick Diaz, I get it, like you know that shit sells, it's cool. But you can't like it. It was even worse than the Jorgen De Castro fight when Jorgen, a kickboxer, was putting him up against the cage like over and over and over because they were both gassed, and and Jorgen was able to just clinch him, put him on the cage, and Felipe had no answer. He was just looking at the ref like, oh, oh, come on, get him off me. It's like, dude, it's MMA. So, like, I'm biased as hell because that pissed me off. And it made me, like, this is not boxing. I know Felipe has some boxing fights. Uh, I think, like, two professional boxing fights. But um, it's just, this is MMA, man. It's mixed martial arts. If that guy can control you up against the cage that's an error in your or like a, that's a hole in your game that you need to figure out um and so you know not the biggest fan of this guy but at the end of the day dude you gotta put that aside and it's like justin top has only got five fights i get i get that felipe only has 10 but um 
you know, Tafa, it's just, man, um, switch over to him. We saw him in his last fight, you know, beat one Adams. All Tafa's fights, except one, have been in the first round. You know, he comes out and just bangs. Got that fucking Samoan savagery. He's just going to come out and finish you or get finished. And they have that common opponent in Jorgen. Jorgen caught him with that fucking clean right and slapped him on that. Uh, and that was on a pay-per-view. And um, <clears throat> now, you know, the only thing is, man, is like Jorgen has slept people with that right hand a couple times. Felipe, he, he's more of a volume striker. He's going to overwhelm you and, and beat you with his volume. Felipe is not exactly like a knockout artist. And uh, so I do feel like, um, you know, in that first round, Tafa can pose some problems. But I do feel like Felipe, by the time the end of the second round, third round's coming, Felipe is going to have the better cardio. He's going to be throwing more volume, scoring more for the judges. I think this one goes to the judges. Um, I, I, I think that uh, Felipe doesn't really have, like, a ton of knockout power for a heavyweight. And that's why I, I would lean uh, Felipe by decision. Um, I just feel like he's going to outvolume him. He's going to. Felipe also has a, a good chin. And I don't think Tafa has any other ways. Like, even though we've seen a hole in Felipe's grappling, especially his clinch defense. But I just don't see Tafa coming out and executing a game plan like that for longer than a round. If he comes out and tries to wrestle, if he comes out and tries to grind Felipe, I see him gassing, and then we'll just see Felipe land more volume in the second and third round and edge the scorecards like that with just volume and just scoring more for the judges. So um, I'm going to lean Felipe. I'm going to take, uh, take him by decision. And uh, haven't decided if I'm going to play that yet. You, uh, on my last video after the weigh-ins, when we go over all my favorite bets, uh, I'll talk about that, and we'll figure figure that out. We'll see the weigh-ins. We'll see everything we got to see, and I'll decide if I want to make that uh, make that gamble. But I do think I got. Uh, well, I don't think I do have Felipe by decision. Um, much as I am not the biggest fan of the guy, I'm not gonna lie. I just stylistically, I I don't think Tafa poses a ton of problems. Uh, at least. Not after that first round, so I'm gonna lean Felipe by decision and let's move on to the next fight. Yep. Did it. And here we go. Next up we got Yanan Wu taking on Jocelyn Edwards and um <clears throat> This fight, man, uh I definitely had to watch a lot of tape for this one because um you know it was pretty interesting seeing um Wu come in. I think she started as like a. Oh wow, they don't have a. Um, I think she started. I want to say like even higher than that, minus one sixty five. She was like, um, she's a really big favorite, one of the bigger favorites, and uh, now it's all the way down to even. Um, yeah, she started at like um, minus two forty on a lot of books. Uh, minus two forty, minus two thirty, depending on what book. And uh, man. I definitely missed that one. Like if it if it would have been if I would have seen Jocelyn Edwards at plus two hundred, then I probably would have had to just take the shot on her because, man, it's like uh, from what I've seen, I, I went back and watched some of Edwards' fights, and it's like her striking's pretty legit. I mean, yeah, it's lower level opponents. Um, she hasn't really fought anybody uh, of note yet, but um, man, she hits like a truck. Like she cracks and. Um, I mean, yeah, you can look at these records. Like, these aren't very experienced women. But, uh, I mean, 0 and 0-0, 0-1, 0-0, 0-0, 0-0, 1-1, 1-0, 0-1, 3-3, 3-3, finally. And then finally fought somebody with a winning record, 8-3. and um, And even her last fight was against a girl 3-4, and four, like, at total war promotion. So, you know, meanwhile, you know, you got Yanan Wu. Um, she... she Inyo, Mizuki Inoue, uh, that wasn't uh, too long ago, 2019 in uh, August. Um, and then she fought Lauren Mueller, um, and going into that, Lauren was 5-0. and Now, it was pesky armbar from guard, but uh, she did f also fight Gina Mazzani. Now, she lost, but and I know we're typically talking about Mazzani not in the greatest of lights when she comes up, but, you know, 
better than some of the opponents she fought. But then once you get to the bottom of her career, 0 and 0, 1 and 0, 0 and 0, 1 and 1, 0 and 0, 0 and 2, 0 and 0, 8 and 2. Ayana Kuniskaya, who okay, that's not a terrible loss. Uh, fought for a belt. Maybe she shouldn't have been in there fighting for the belt, but then went back 0 and 3 to get back on the horse. Somebody with no record, and then 0 and 0. So both these girls haven't fought really anybody yet. I mean, well, no, I won't say anybody for for Wu. She's fought a couple tough fighters, and then. Um, Jocelyn really hasn't fought anybody yet. The thing is, the way to beat Jocelyn, it seems like, is going to be to take her down, you know? Take her down because it doesn't seem like she has the greatest wrestling or jujitsu, and she doesn't seem to be much of a threat off her back. And if you take her down, you can probably hold her there for a bit. You can win rounds. You might be able to land a submission. Thing is, man, Wu's shot one takedown in the UFC so far. And, um... Even before that, you know, she's not someone who wants to come out and shoot a lot of takedowns. These girls are probably going to spend 15 minutes just striking. So that's why it's like, if you got on early for Jocelyn, I think it's a good bet. Now that it's even money, it should be even money in my opinion. Because this is going to be a close decision. It's, it's going to be close, and it's going to go to decision. So when, it, when it's lower level women's MMA fight... It's going gonna go to decision unless Jocelyn land. I mean, both these girls actually, as I'm sitting here saying how it's gonna go to decision, you go to their fights, it's almost all finishes. But these are against lower level girls when there's large stylistic, you know, there's holes. Even when they were when they lost, it's like the pesky armbar from guard, or it's when they finally had step ups. It's like I really don't think this is gonna be a finish. I think this is going to decision. Um, I think if anybody were to get the finish, it would be Jocelyn. But I, I, I would, I would lean towards it going to decision. So then it's like, which side are you on? Now that it's even money, I don't think there's a lot of value on either side. If you got on it early, Jocelyn by decision, that's a good bet. Uh, whoever you take, I think personally you should add on by decision. Because again, a lot of people are going to look at that. They're going to say, oh, well, these girls are all getting finishes, like. 85% of their fights, 80% of their fights are in and then finished. But, uh, nah, um, I don't think, I think this is going to be a low scoring, slow, women, lower level women's MMA striking fight for 15 minutes. And if you paid two to one on Yanan Wu, you're going to be sweating. So, overall, I'm going to take, actually, yeah, I'm going to go with Jocelyn Edwards by decision. Um, but, you know, not betting on this. Miss the line is what it is. Moving on, though, we got... This is a good fight. One of my favorite fights on the card. We got Nasruddin and Mavov taking on Phil Haas. And um, both these guys um, coming off good last fights. Uh, Mavov uh, had money on in his last fight. Um... And he took on Jordan Williams, who uh, was coming off the Contender Series. And a um, little bit, you know, undersized. Um, that was part of the reason I was with um, Imavov. Um, you know, a lot of people were on Jordan Williams, which I really just did not understand. Um, but he is, a, he, like, he, he put a tough account of himself, man. Um, and uh, Imavov did have to fight back from adversity. When he got, he ate a pretty flush head kick and got like sit down. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, dude's 24 years old. I wanted to make sure I pointed that out. And six uh, three, pretty big guy for uh, for the division. And uh, I don't know for like just his frame. Um, and I mean, I like this guy, man. I like he is like they call him the Russian sniper. Um, so unlike a lot of his. Uh, his teammates over there and, and his fucking his Dagestani brothers uh, he, he'd rather strike he does have pretty good wrestling like I always hear like oh his wrestling shit his grappling shit he like fake Dagestani like nah man his grappling's pretty legit it's just not how he likes to fight like they call him a sniper for a reason like good body work dude's 
good knees to the body, like punches to the body, which you uh, it sounds basic, but like you don't see that that often in MMA, especially like until you get to the highest level. Like he'll actually throw combinations, body head, body head, but like he can like he's got power on those shots too. Like he hasn't fought a lot of guys. Like I wanted to make sure I did say that. If you go through here, okay, you know, not the highest of level competition. But you go through Phil Haas, and I mean, this, a lot of people know him, John Jones' teammate, a lot of people also know him for saying that he would win rounds against uh, John Jones. But, um, man, uh, went to the Ultimate Fighter, lost to the person who won the show, so who knows how that would have went. Lost to Andrew Sanchez, somebody that I've made money on, and I always say, like, it's better than people give credit for then got submitted by Lewis Taylor, and then got knocked out brutally by Julian Marquez. And uh, the thing with Phil Haas is, man, high-level wrestler, tons of power, super explosive. We saw that in his last fight. I actually made money on him, too, um, in his last fight. Um, had him on some parlays. Um, just Jacob Balcoon, just not a lot of experience. I mean, only went in there with only four pro fights. Like, that was a big step up for him, and did not go well. Phil caught him right at the beginning of the fight didn't even take a punch and it was best case scenario for him thing is man that's how he has to win he's proven like phil ha is going to be super dangerous for Amalov in that first round but if Amalov gets out of that first round man i just feel like he's just going to piece him up we're going to see phil get desperate for these takedowns and i'm going to see Amalov either land a sniper right hand or or um catch him in that guillotine man because phil like the, when he gets tired, when he starts shooting those desperate shots, like the guillotines are there, and you got a mob of long, rangy, six three, like I don't know, man. Um, Phil Haas, like he, I feel like he's got to knock him out in that first round, at least like first round and a half. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna see a mob of start to take over, and um, a mob of started as a pretty sizable. I think he was like plus one fifty at some at one point of the week. Um, <clears throat> I locked him in at, do 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 do, yeah, plus one thirty five. I locked uh, Mavov in, and um, I'm pretty happy with that bet, man. I really feel like is the more pass to victory. He's just got to get out of that first round, first round and a half. Feels super dangerous at the beginning of the fight for sure, but once he starts getting tired, I just think he's gonna start eating shots. He's not gonna have a whole lot of like, man. He's just. He, his striking, he doesn't have a lot of layers to it, man. He's just big, powerful right hand, uh, heavy takedowns, obviously, good wrestling. But not the he doesn't have the gas tank to do it for even two full rounds, like two full rounds to, to win two to one. Uh, so I really feel like if he comes out and wrestles hard against Amalov, we'll see him slow down enough in the second round where Amalov will just take over from there. So <clears throat> I got Amalov. Um... I thought about taking him inside the distance because I think if Phil gasses, we could see Amavov getting a late finish here. But um, I'm going to play it safe. I got him at plus 135. I'm already pretty happy about that. I feel like he's the rightful favorite. The Lions came down even more since then, uh, so we beat the line a little bit. I didn't get it at plus 150 like I saw that, but I did get it at plus 135, which I'm pretty happy about. Because um, I missed like two lines on this card, so I was happy I got this one. I think he's the rightful favorite. I, I like Phil Haas, uh, and he's fun to watch. But man, I just like that cardio is an issue, and because of that cardio being an issue, we can't really fight the way that I feel like he has to fight to really like be his his best self. Like if he could go out there and wrestle and and throw bombs for even two full rounds, and then if he doesn't get the finish, be up two to one, like. I'd be more confident, but I really feel like if he goes out there and goes balls to the wall in that first round, we're going to see him just drop off a cliff. So I'm going to go a mob off, just straight up money line, and um, let's move on to the next fight. Uh, next up, we got Punali, Punahili taking on uh, Punahili Soriano, and um, I probably butchered that. Uh, I definitely said it a couple times throughout the week, and then every time it's time to make the video, I just forget it. But he's taking on my boy Dusko Tavoriak, who won me some money in his last fight. He was one of the anchors of my parlay. And, uh, yeah, Dusko coming off, uh, you know, I mean, it was, a, it was a pretty gimme fight. The UFC definitely re recognizes that he's pretty legit and want to, uh, 
you know, give him a little bit of a slow grind. <clears throat> he did knock out Michelle Pereira a couple fights ago, then went in there, beat Teddy Ash, and then went in his last fight and pretty thoroughly dominated Daquan. I mean, you saw him eat, I think it was like a big right hand at one point, but he ate it like pretty well, didn't lose composure, took him down, controlled him, mounted him, and just kind of pounded him out. Daquan, though, going into that fight, I mean, it's been a rough run. That was four in a row. Now, had some tough tough matchups there, but, you know, he was supposed to win that fight. And if you go through his fights, I mean, um, he's finishing people. The, uh, not the best of competition near the beginning, but, I mean, hey, third fight was against 8-0 no, Tony uh, Markalev, and uh, got the win there. And then, um, you know, even though some of these names might not jump out at you, you know, it's not the worst regional career. Um, as far as competition, obviously, it's not the worst when he's going out there finishing people. But And then against Rochelle Pereira, it just came out and just, like, went right at Pereira. Fucking just completely cool. He just banging with him, knocked him out. Superior, just looked like the cleaner striker. And, um, and it seems like he's honestly gotten better since then. His last two fights, he's looked like... I don't know, like his fight IQ's grown. Um, in the last fight, he just he looked composed, like for a young guy, for and a pretty inexperienced guy with only ten fights, to to you know eat a shot like that against a, a powerful striker, somebody who's just trying to take your head off, and just not lose composure, get get to what you do best, taking him down, pass the guard, smash. Like I, I like to see it. Those are guys I like to bet on. On the other side, though, we got uh, Soriano, and um, he's over at Extreme Couture. And um, I was—I remember when they announced that Eric Spicely fight, and I'm like, okay, they're trying to definitely build this guy. Then he, then he had to pull out, and then they gave him Anthony Hernandez, and then he had to pull out of that one. And then he—I was waiting. I was waiting after they pulled that fight because I had a bet on that fight. Um, and and then um, going into the. Uh, like the next half of the year, I was just waiting for them to reannounce him uh, a fight, but it never happened. So I don't know if this dude's been hurt. Like he's been, he hasn't said shit about it on his social media. And because uh, I was trying to figure out, like, has he been injured? Like I'm assuming because that's why he had to pull out of the uh, out of the Eric Spicely fight. But it's like, dude's just been like MIA. So you know he hasn't fought since, yeah the end of 2019 so it's basically been a uh, year and some change year and two months uh and he fought oscar pachota and before then jamie pickett so it's like not the greatest of competition lfa uh, uh, he, he had a little debut over there got a finish uh but giovanni patti you know hasn't had like the hardest competition either both these guys undefeated but haven't had the uh has, haven't fought the top opposition yet, obviously. Uh, do want to say, though, um, you know, he did have the four amateur fights, which you didn't get to see, um, <clears throat> which uh, you didn't see from Dusko, zero amateur fights. Um, I always like to see that, you know, so um, depending on it, if you want like to, you know, some people like to completely write those off, but at A, in my opinion, a lot of people are saying, hey, he has more experience. Well, well technically... Soriano's actually been in there four more times. Um, but um, <clears throat> overall, I just feel like it's going to be a good fight. This is a close fight. I do feel like this is going to decision. Both these guys have shown they're durable, shown they can take a, fu- take a punch. While a lot of these guys, or uh, a lot of people are saying that, like, oh, these are finishers, like, this is going to be a finish. I really feel like this is going to decision. Um, so what I ended up doing was I took Dusko by decision. Um, I feel like he's going to be able to get some takedowns. And um, I don't think he can finish. Like, both these guys, like I said, man, they've shown they can take a punch. They've shown that their grappling's pretty legit. I don't see him getting submitted. I mean, if anybody got submitted, I think it would be Soriano. But I think overall he should be able to avoid the submissions. I lean Dusko, but I did take a bet on the fight to not go or to go to decision and then i also ended up doubling down and taking dusko by decision um if you want to play it safe maybe you just go fight goes the decision 
Um, let me see what the line's at now. Uh, I think it's still pretty good. Uh, fight goes to decision. Yeah, I mean, it's sitting at plus 140 now. Uh, so it's still pretty good. Uh, I got it at plus 180. So, I mean, I, like you might, you lost a little bit of the uh, value, but, you know, it's still there. And then Dusko, I, I doubled down a little late on that. I wish I would have got it earlier because I think that line was even better. But I got Dusko by decision. Do, 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 do. Dusko mm, by decision. Where is that at? Yeah. Plus 275. Uh, and I, some people had it at plus 350. Man, that's good. 275. Oh, it's still plus 275 too. So, um, so if you want to go uh, a little bit more ballsy, you could take Dusko by decision. I've been seeing people saying he gets the submission. He, I won't rule it out. I think it's either going to be a Dusko. Uh, if he doesn't get the decision, it, it could be a submission. <clears throat> but overall, I think Soriano's going to avoid the submissions. But I think he will lose a pr pretty competitive decision. I think Dusko's going to have to rely on that grappling. and um, and But he's pretty good at mixing it up, man. The strike is not bad. I just feel like overall, a little bit more polished and uh strong like he uses wrestling and he always has a bit of a strength advantage it seems i think he can just get on top win rounds so uh if anybody gets to finish i do think it's dusko but i would lean dusko by decision or like i said you play it safe fight goes the decision i think that's a pretty safe bet next up another banger but with another caveat of instead of a meave, you got DeCherico. Both of those two hate bangers. But you got Joaquin, Joaquin Buckley, though. So uh, if anybody could make it a banger, it's him. Joaquin Buckley taking on Alessio DeCherico and, uh, or Joaquin Buckley. I've literally heard both pronunciations a million times. I don't know which is supposed to be. Um, Buckley, now I got to say, like, I do think he's a little overhyped. I love the guy as much as everybody else, but like, and I get it. He took the fight on short notice, but we did see Holland kind of piece him up, kind kind of just like piece him up and just out strike him. He looked like the much better striker out there. I mean, you had Buckley out there swinging for the bleachers, but Holland just looked like the much sharper, just overall, not just boxer, but he was working the clinch. It he was able to clinch Buckley up against the cage, even though it was scary to watch. Got a bunch of money on all in that night, but uh. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously in the Epikasagane fight, not only the knockout, but before then, he looked composed, he looked good, he looked much more composed than he did against Kevin Holland, which I could understand, it was super short notice, Holland had like an 8 inch reach advantage on him, and he, like like a lot of people, he said, uh, you know, he didn't exactly have his normal uh, <clears throat> fight cardio, so he probably felt like he had to go in there and just knock his head off in the first round. And that seemed like the game plan he went with. Against Kasaganai and even Jordan Wright, he seemed a lot more like patient, a lot more ready to just wait for the openings. And in Jordan Wright, you could like the first round was close until the end when he caught him. And then Jordan Wright was like done. And when he walked out for the second round, I was like, oh man, they're going to let this guy walk out. He's about to get brutalized. And sure enough, 18 seconds in, he just gets demolished. But uh, the thing is, like, DeCherico, where he doesn't have the athleticism, the explosiveness, the speed that Buckley does, DeCherico pretty stiff, pretty slow. He's coming off three-fight losing streak. One was pretty iffy, that Kevin Holland fight. Now, Kevin Holland did, like, break his hand. But um, I thought DeCherico might have won that fight, even though I was rooting for Holland. Like, I was like, fuck, fucking Holland lost. But they gave him the decision. Eee, it was pretty dicey, but three fight losing streak, ton of cancellations, man. That's crazy. Holy hell! Look at that, six. Um, thank God they got him out of that Jared Cannon ear fight. That might not have gone well for him. <laughs> but uh, did beat Julian Marquis. Marquise did beat uh Bang Buse with that knee, that brutal knee. That was that was savage. But other than that, Bang Buse fight. It's just been decision city, man, for the latter part of his career. He doesn't take a lot of chances. He's similar to Ameev, <clears throat> not in the sense of like Ameev's more like the wants to grapple you, put you up against the cage. I mean, Tacherico will try that, but he's more of just like, yo, he's super defensive. He's super durable, 
which is a good like it's the one big thing about him. He's he's very durable, but man, he just doesn't throw any volume. He just like doesn't want to let you have any openings for to counter him. He really just he'll let you strike first. He just he's pretty plotty, like he's slow. Buckley's gonna have a huge speed, athleticism, explosive. Like he's gonna be much more explosive. He has a lot of advantages on the Cherico. The big thing is that a Cherico has is durability, man. Like never been finished. Super fucking ironclad chin. Uh, does get a little tired, but um, <clears throat> I don't know if in this fight it's gonna. That's one that's gonna like we're gonna see too much. I really feel like uh, you know this could be the time where we see Buckley just win a decision like everybody looks at him right now is like oh man he just comes out and just fucking knocks guys out but it's like those are the last two fights were like best case scenario i do think that the ufc has given a guy on a three fight losing streak to buckley who they fucking love right now because they know or at least in their mind buckley's gonna beat him but the thing is man i really don't think buckley is gonna just go in there and knock him out as easy and he's like a minus 290 favor right now. So I can't possibly bet that. I mean, come on. That's minus 275, 270, 280 on some books. <clears throat> when he was a, like, what was he? Low 200s against fucking Jordan Wright, whose first seven opponents didn't have a win. They were like 0 and 28. So, and I made money that night. I had Buckley, but I'm not laying damn near 3 to 1 against a guy who's. Uh, against full on a knockout artist who's fighting a guy who's never been knocked out <clears throat> and i've seen holes in buckley's game like i do think he's a little overrated i like the guy like i hate using the word overrated but like i, I just think people are like you know it's like mike tyson except he throws kicks like slow down a little bit de super durable he is slow he is plotty he is stiff but what I did, I do think Buckley's going to throw way more volume. If anybody gets a finish, it'd be Buckley. But what I think is going to happen is Buckley is just going to... He's going to have a, have to have a little bit more of a measured approach. And I feel like he's just going to win two rounds here, maybe three. And uh, and I, I got Buckley by decision here. And um, I think it's a pretty good bet, man. Honestly, I got it at... Uh, let's see... Uh, even right now, I think it's still a good line, but I got it doomed Buckley by, by, yeah. Yeah, it's still about the same. I got it plus 275. Um, let me see what it is. Uh, yeah, it's still plus 275 on some books, plus 250. So, um, uh, I think, yeah, I mean, there's a good chance that Buckley's going to, Get the decision win here, man. Uh, DeCherico, one thing he doesn't do is get finished. And, I mean, unless you see him, like, start losing pretty, pretty, you know, majorly. And then you just see him, like, fuck it. I'm about to get cut after this anyways because I'm about to be 0-4 in my last four. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen, man. I think he'll tough it out, lose a decision. I do think, man, like, people are a little crazy laying, like, 3-1 to one just because it's like, man... Like, this is a step up. You're going from Jordan Wright to Alessio DeCherico and the line's wider? I just, poof. I know he's coming off two knockouts, but slow down a little bit, huh? But give me Buckley by decision, and let's move on to the next fight. Next up, we got Santiago Ponzinibbio making, <clears throat> making his long-awaited turn return, and he's fighting Jing Lang Lee. And, um... Man, two years ago, this would have been a, fu a real easy bet for me, man. I, I would have said Santiago, pa Santiago Pontanibio easily. Probably would have been the most confident play on, on this entire card. But it's like minus 280. I think he's up to like minus 290 now. And he's taking this long layoff. He's been super sick. He's been having like arthritic issues. And he's been in the hospital. He's had like He had like a blood problem, I think, too. It was like... Uh, yeah, he's had a lot of health issues and I mean he is training over there at ATT. They all say he looks great uh, He's coming off some good wins. I mean the Neil Magny wins good Mike Perry. Okay taking him to decision and it wasn't even like super dominant Yeah Okay, I'll take it the Gunnar Nelson fight. Okay, obviously not gonna have Gunnar Nelson the first rounds big But man that eye poke was something serious 
Nordine Taleb, Zach Cummings, Court McGee. Like, those are some good wins. And then, uh, Lorenz Larkin was a dog. Like, hey, man. Like, I don't, I don't, you can't beat yourself up too much losing to him. Beating Sean Strickland, that's a good win, too. Uh, Wendell Oliveira is even pretty good. Like, he has some good wins. He's at the high, highest level UFC uh, fighters, but pretty solid. And even on his Ultimate Fighter, uh, huh, right. He did a good job. Um, dude cracks, man. He hits hard. Good striking. Uh, defense is pretty solid, too. Like, yeah, he knows when to take risks and when not to. Seems like his fight IQ has just gotten a lot better over the years. It's that layoff that really scares me. And he's fighting a guy in Jing Lang Li who, man, this dude just goes after it. Um, I love watching Jing Lang fight because, man, this dude just comes out. And the Neil Magny fight, I knew that was a horrible matchup for him because Magny's not going to play that game. But Jing Lang Li, man, he just likes to come out here and just trade. Like, he's a bit of a brawler. And, uh, you know, when he fights guys, Jake Matthews, Neil Magny, who aren't going to play that game, it can, it, you know, it might not go good for him. But when he can bait you into that, like, he likes to just take one to give one and trade. And, uh, man, like, his timing on some of those counter shots are just is, is on point. And, uh, like I said, typically I would I would be heavy on Santi- Santiago Ponzinibbio, but... Uh, it's like, man, that your timing is going to be really fucked up after after taking a two-year-plus layoff. And you're fighting a guy who's going to come forward, man. Jing Ling, like, he, he doesn't know anywhere else, anywhere they're fighting. He's not going to come out here and try to wrestle Santiago. He's not going to come out here and try to run and get on his bike. He's going to, like, bring the fight to Santiago. So if Santiago hasn't been getting the necessary, like, hard sparring... To get that flow back, to get this timing back, you could see him getting clipped with something. And I do think Ponzinibbio wins this fight. Uh, I think unless Jing Lang comes, if he, it's hard because I was trying to find a prop because I'm not gonna pay 290. And I'm like, oh man, maybe I go Santiago by decision because I do feel like he's gonna, you know, after the layoff, he's gonna probably want to just ease his way back in. But it's like, man, Jing Lang. He's not the type to let you ease into shit. He's going to come forward and bring the fight to him. If he does that, somebody could get finished, whether it's Lee or or Santiago. So, honestly, as far as right now, man, the line's just too crazy. There's too many ways that I feel like this fight can go in the sense of, like, prop-wise. So, I'm going to take Santiago. <sighs> By decision. But I'm not going to bet that right now. Uh, We'll see after the weigh-in if anything changes. We'll see, um, yeah, if if maybe it's a live bet opportunity. Um, But uh, as far as right now, it's just going to be Santiago by decision, but it's going to be a pass as far as betting. And let's move on to the next fight. Next up, co-main event. We got Carlos Condit and Matt Brown. This fight's fucking... (laughs) This is crazy, man. I can't believe this fight's happening, man. Uh, 31 and 13, taking on 22 and 17. <clears throat> man, um, where to begin? First, man, it, Carlos Condon broke that uh, long streak he had. Uh, he had five straight losses. But, you know, you go through them and it's Robbie Lawler. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I thought he edged that. Damian Maya, okay, terrible stylistic matchup for him. Neil Magny, terrible stylistic matchup for him. Alex Oliveira, okay, a little bit better style matchup, but still, Alex Oliveira, tough dude, especially when your confidence is in the shitter on a three-fight losing streak. Oh, look at that, Matt Brown and him, supposed to fight, glad it's happening now. Uh, but And then Michael Chiesa, like, yo, you give him Michael Chiesa after four fights, after a four-fight losing streak? What was the logic in that? And he almost caught Chiesa in that arm bar, but Chiesa hit him with that nasty one-arm Kimura, which was pretty sick. But, I mean, he did what he was supposed to do. And then, uh, <clears throat> you know, he did get that comeback fight against Court McGee. The only thing is, it's like, okay, I'll admit, I had Court McGee in that fight. Because Carlos Condit has some of the worst takedown defense in, in UFC history. Court McGee has made his living off grinding people, taking them down, and living by that whole fucking game plan. And he came out and did exactly what I was scared he was going to do. Him and Carlos Condon are like buddies. He came out and was like, oh, I want to give the fans a show. And 
I'm gonna try to knock him out. We're gonna be. They're just gonna strike. Like no, give him the wet blanket. That's what kept you a job, Court McGee. You are not fucking ever gonna be Carlos Condon on the feet. It doesn't matter how like past his prime he is. And sure enough, Carlos Condon fucking edged him on the decision. Pretty, not even edge, pretty decisively. I mean, as I would have bet if I, if you would have told me Court McGee's gonna shoot like what was it, maybe one takedown the whole fight. It might not have even shot any. <clears throat> the only thing is, I don't think Matt Brown's gonna like, like Matt Brown. The one thing about him for this matchup is, I really think that like he's gonna bring the fight, man. He's talking about this could be his last fight, and a lot of times you see guys who are kind of one foot one out, one foot in, one foot out, are like a little gun shy. I don't. I really feel like, man, even in that Beza fight, he caught Beza, lit him up a little bit, then Beza ended up turning around, finished him, but. Uh, and he did look slow in that fight. <sighs> Crazy. It was just so much quicker. So just had such an athletic advantage. Quicker, sharper, more like more. Not even like Matt Brown. The last thing to go is the power. He still has his power, but like it's just when he throws those power shots, they're just so much more telegraphed. Like they're just slower. And um. The only the thing I will give him is I don't think he's gonna play that game that that uh uh like in Carlos Condon's last fight like he's not gonna play that that game that uh Court McGee f- fought and just like let fucking sit in kicking range and let fucking Carlos just kick him and throw into every combination with a kick and just stand there like Matt Brown's gonna get in his face and try to knock him out like that's what Matt Brown does he lives by the sword dies by the sword. That is just, like, the only way he knows how to fight. The thing is, man, Carlos Condit never been knocked out. Only technical TKO KO on his record is when Tyron Woodley kicked his knee out. Carlos never, like, his chin is always held up. And uh, I don't think this fight's going to the ground, but you got to have to at least throw it out there. Matt Brown's been submitted, like, 10, 11 times. And Carlos Condon, while he's not known as, like, a jiu-jitsu guy, I mean, he is kind of. Um, but, you know, he likes to strike for sure, but he does have threats on his gr- on the ground. And if Matt Brown takes him down and tries to, like, land some vicious ground and pound, you could see him slap on an arm bar. I'm just saying it's possible. I don't see the fight going to the ground more than maybe once, which is probably not even going to be Matt Brown coming out looking for takedowns. They're just going to might maybe wind up on the ground once, maybe twice. I don't see that happening for most of the fight. I think these guys are going to trade. Or not even necessarily trade. Carlos isn't going to want to trade. He's going to want to keep it at kick range. Kick him to the body. He loves working the body. And Matt Brown has shown that he's pretty susceptible to the body. But uh, I got to lean Carlos. But I, it's just I can't bet this. Knowing there's just so many X factors, and I think Carlos is up to like what uh, minus one seventy or something like that. Uh, if it was like minus one thirty, I'd bet it. But oh, even maybe minus one fifty. But I just don't know if I could pull the trigger on Carlos Condit uh, at that high. I I am thinking about taking Carlos Condit by decision though, because I've seen everybody like, oh, this fight's not going to. The, the uh, full distance, both these guys, you know, older, their durability. But it's like Carlos's durability is still there. And if you're talking about Matt's durability, okay. But I don't know if Carlos still has that, like, I don't know, man. I, I, I think his days of, like, knocking people out are probably past him. Maybe he has one more left in him. And if he does, Matt Brown, sorry. Like, I love the guy, but, you know, not... You know, if, if he has one more left in him, it could very well be Matt Brown. But I got to lean Carlos Condit by decision, but not paying minus 170. We'll see um, if I end up laying the by decision. It's not even up on the book I want to use yet. And when it does, I'll see what the line is. But I'm, I, I mean, I just don't like betting on these type of... It bit me in the ass in that last fight in that Court McGee and it's just like, shoot a takedown, man. But when these guys start thinking, oh, this is my last fight. I want to put on a fan for the, or a show for the fans. I want an extra 50 grand. These type of things, man. It's just, man. It'll, it'll really just bite you in the ass chasing props on that. So we'll see. I do lean Carlos Condit by decision, but I'm going to lay off of it for now. 
Time for the main event. We got Max Holloway taking on Calvin Cater. And uh, Max coming off uh, two losses and and then uh, had the loss of Dustin Poirier not too long before that. But, uh, man, you know, I, I thought he won that second Alexander Volk, Volkanovski fight. Um, it was a close fight, but I thought he won the first three rounds. The first two weren't debatable. Third was close. I thought he edged it. Um... And I get why people are saying, like, Cater's a live dog here. Because Cater, probably the best boxer in the division. Probably one of the best boxers in the UFC. Um, heavy hands. Has shown that he is, is uh, in the Zabit fight, he was coming on late. And in the Ige fight, he's stuck in there. I do think him and Ige got... No, of course they got tired. Fighting for 25 minutes is not natural. And everybody gets tired when they fight 25 minutes in the UFC. But... I saw him slow down a decent amount, and you got to factor in that, you know, Max does have a shit ton of five-round fights. I mean, literally, look at these. Even if they don't go five rounds, it still is a training camp for five rounds, and it still is knowing that it's five rounds in your mind the whole time when you game plan and when you're fighting. Five rounds, 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 uh... I think, yeah, this was the last fight that wasn't a five-round fight. I mean, that's that's experience mentally and physically. He knows how to pace himself. And while you could say Volkanovski won the later rounds in their fights, it's like that's just a completely different style matchup, man. And, and uh, you know, Calvin, heavy hands, good boxing, but... He does get hit a lot. If you actually go through his stats, and I'm not a huge stats guy for MMA. It's more about watching the fight. But it was pretty surprising to see he actually absorbs more strikes than he gives out. Um, which is pretty surprising, honestly, for somebody who's touted as, like, you know, one of the best boxers in the division. Which I understand and I agree with. But, you know, he does rely on that durability, which is there. He's never been finished by strikes. Um, he, he is durable. He does have a chin. And his cardio hasn't uh, failed him yet. The only thing is, man, um, if you let Max get off on you like that, I just feel like that just builds and builds and builds for Max. And he's not going to let off his strikes. He's going to throw more and more strikes as the fight goes on if he's piecing you, if he's able to continue to land. See, with Alex and with Dustin, it's like, with Dustin, first of all, the weight class, it seemed like, man, Dustin's known to weigh in. Uh, the day of the fight, 175, bro, like, he probably had, like, 20 pounds on Max. I mean, he had at least, like, 15, no, nah, maybe not 20, but, like, 15 pounds on him. And he's a power a power puncher already without that. So, it's just, like, the strikes, Max actually outlanded him in the fight, but Dustin was landing the harder shots, and it was, ta- it was taking, it was sapping a little bit of Max's will. Not even will, like, mentally, but, like, physically. And, uh... And then he put it on Alex in that second fight. He made a lot of adjustments. And uh, I just feel like, you know, maybe it was a little bit mint. I, I feel like he felt like he was winning the fight and maybe eased off a little bit, thinking he won the first three rounds, fighting him smart, wanted that, you know, title, everything on the line. You lost this guy. You can't lose twice because he knows what's happened. Now he's in this weird boat where he lost the champ twice. You know, um, but... So I don't necessarily think that he was just so tired and that his cardio, like, I've heard seen some people saying, like, Max doesn't look the same. He's slowing down as the fights go on instead of heating up. It's like, man, styles make fights, and obviously Volk is the champ for a reason. I do think Max won the last fight, but that's just how the fight played out. Um, I don't know, man. Calvin, I really feel like he has to land a bomb to take Max out of there because I really feel like in that second half of the fight like the end of the third fourth fifth we're gonna see max start taking over that volume if you're willing to get hit five sometimes significant strikes a minute like max gonna eat up eat you up man and i I do think calvin has the power advantage he does have a, a really good chin both these guys are crazy durable with crazy chins and good uh cardio which is great cardio which is gonna make for a fucking banger of a main event but Man, the experience, the volume, the fuck, just, man, like, he's he's more of a puncher, he's more of a boxer, even though, like, kickboxing background, but likes to, he prefers to use his hands, but I do want to see Max, like, mixing some kicks. I get, 
he was able to do that a little bit more with Alex because while Alex does have a long reach, he's still a shorter guy. Um, so I feel like that came into the play when Max was throwing a little bit more kicks than usual. But um, I like to see him like keep to that. Like obviously he's not gonna come out here and be fucking Barboza, but if he could just come out here and fucking you know mix it up, mix it up a little bit because Calvin he doesn't really throw like he'll throw a light kick here and there, he'll faint the kicks. But he doesn't really throw a ton of kicks. I like to see Max get to that inside low kick, get to that body kick, get uh, you know just mix it up. And uh, if he does it, I think we, he you could see him start to pull away at the second half of the fight. So I'm gonna take Max. I'm gonna take Max by decision. Um, the line is coming down, so I'm gonna let it keep coming down. It's like down to like minus 160 now. Uh, I started off like damn near two to one. So I'm gonna let that keep going down because it's literally just steadily going down. I think it's actually like minus 155. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I might end up taking Max. I might take Max by decision. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. But uh, I do have Max. Um, I don't know if I just want to sit back and enjoy this as a fan. Max is also the Twitch homie. Um, low bias. I will tell you all that up front. But I just feel like he is going to win this fight, man. Um, I feel like, man, I know he's like, even though he's on... Uh, like, yeah, he's 29, and I get everyone to be like, oh, but he has the fucking, you know, fight-wise, he's 35. Yeah, but, like, man, I get it. Like, he's taking a lot of shots, but, man, like, dude, them Hawaiians, man, they're a little different. I don't know. I don't know if, if you can count him out yet, man. Yeah, I think the whole narrative would be so different if he wouldn't have been, in my opinion, not robbed, but I thought he won the belt. He should be champ right now. I don't think people would be singing these same tunes about how Calvin's gonna, you know, has the live dog of the of the card of the card. If Max is holding that belt, it's like a they see that he's lost two, he's lost uh, three of his last four, and they're and they're ready to start getting ready to write him off. And I'm like, slow down a little bit, man. Max, one of the greats. So I'm gonna lean Max by decision. I don't have a play on it yet. But I will read off the plays I do have. Not a ton of bets on this card yet. Uh, the next two cards I think are a little easier to find places to bet. But uh, this one's pretty tough. I've picked my plays. I, I am looking to make uh, at a couple more props. That a couple of them I mentioned on here. And I want to see the weigh-ins too. I always like to see the weigh-ins. I like to obviously get on bets as early as I can. But um, you know, after the weigh-in, I, I sometimes it gives me that last little bit of motivation to pull the trigger on a couple. But so far, I got Nasruddin Namavev, um, straight up money line. I got Dustin, to, uh, or to Dustin, Dusko Tavorak uh, to win by decision. I also have the fight to go to, to decision. A little bit of a hedge, I guess you could call it. I got the under two and a half for Austin Lingo, Jacob Kilburn. I have Jake, uh, Joaquin Buckley by decision. And I have Ramzan Amiv by decision. So, uh... A lot less bets than you typically see me doing. I like to spread my ownership around. But at the same time, I'm trying to be a little bit more disciplined. Uh, who knows how long I'll keep it up there. I am a degenerate. But, uh, you know, 2021, I'm like, yo, we had a good year last year. We made a lot of money. Let's fucking buckle down and be fucking disciplined. And we're going to pick the shots where I'm most confident in. So I still got some plays I'm looking at. I'm going to be dropping a short video after the weigh-in, just like usual, like a quick little five-minute showing off my favorite bets. I'm going to list these, obviously, but I'm going to, if I make any more, which I usually do, they'll be on that video. So make sure you leave a comment, leave a sub. I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, help me get the subs, subs up. And make sure you come through on Twitch and watch the fights with me. I'm going to be live, as always, for the for the fights. I might. Uh, Randy Brown's going to hop on either this one or the next one with me, uh, one of the homies super cool dude and streamer and uh i always like getting his knowledge uh during the fights but we're gonna be live on there so come through and yeah man tweet me some shit i always gonna tweet out my plays uh my twitter and twitch and all that's gonna be in, uh down below so uh yeah man i appreciate you guys and uh i will also add timestamps. give me like a couple hours i gotta go do a couple things peace it's been a longer one than i anticipated but you know i'm glad to be back so let's make some money. Let's keep it going. Let's start 2021 off, right? Good luck. Have fun watching the fights. Hopefully you come through and watch it with me. Peace.